All right guys, in this video, I'm here to give you all the information you need to know about doing a TP added carb swap and provide you with a parts list that's fresh in 2023. If you're like me, you wanted to swap your TP to a carb, but there's not a lot of information on the internet and what's available is either incomplete or totally incorrect. There's a lot of websites, a lot of YouTube videos I watched where people told you stuff, but turns out they're either doing it wrong or they didn't even know what they're doing, or you just had people who are hating on it, the fact that you're converting a TP to a carb and overall just totally went against it. So I'm gonna dispel all the myths. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do this. So before I get into it, I wanna tell you why I swapped my TPI to a carb. I bought my 86 C4 as a project car with a blown head gasket. I had initially planned to keep the stock TPI components as it was pretty cool, but the more I took it apart to get to the heads, I realized how much junk was on the motor. All the emissions equipment, throttle body coolant line, intake coolant lines, vacuum lines, the smog pump, the air tubes, overall, everything. I decided I didn't want to go through the trouble of putting it back together, especially with all the modifications since I was deleting a lot of the emissions equipment. And all the parts were getting pretty old. They're nearing 40 years old. So you got to imagine all the plastic, the rubber, the injector harnesses, the O-rings, everything was getting pretty deteriorated at this point, despite the car only having 60,000 miles. So I made the decision not to do the TPI and I went through with a carb swap. So I want to start with the common myths that a lot of people on the internet or YouTube will tell you. First off, you don't need to hotwire your fuel pump. For some reason, I don't know where this myth came from, but I read it on a couple forums where people say you gotta hotwire your fuel pump, do it to the relay. As long as you don't screw too much with your fuel injection harness, you don't need to screw with your fuel pump. It'll automatically turn on every time you hit the key, no matter what. You also don't need to worry about VATS. I don't know where this one came from either, but I kept reading it. People saying the uh, vehicle anti-theft would trip out. But as you could imagine, there's no reason it would trip out. All you're doing is unplugging essentially fuel injectors and a couple sensors. Also, a lot of people will tell you, you need to cut a hole in the hood. Now there's ways to work around it. So in my case, I have a two inch air cleaner, which is pretty low profile. However, it still does bump the hood in a couple spots. So you have to cut the stud on the carburetor for your air cleaner down a little bit. And you might have to dremel some of your hood on the underside or maybe dent your air cleaner. But overall, you can make it work without cutting a gaping hole in the hood and putting a scoop on it. First thing is first, you need to figure out what carburetor and intake you want. There's many options out there and ultimately it's up to you to decide what setup you want. There's a lot of carburetors and intakes between single plane and dual plane and 600 TFM versus 650, 750, double pumpers, mechanical secondaries. It's ultimately up to you to decide how you want to build your car. I chose the Utterbach Performer 2021 kit as it had almost everything I needed to get the motor fired up. This particular kit is a dual plane intake that's also low rise, so it clearances the hood a lot better. And this particular kit is good for 5,500 RPM. Now, a lot of people say, why didn't you get the RPM? Well, because this is a stock bottom end cast components. And to be honest, I don't want to rev this thing past 5,500 to begin with, because it's probably not going to like it between the valve drain and the bottom end and everything. I'm not going to do it. Next, most important thing you need next to this carburetor and intake is a fuel pressure regulator. These Corvettes have an electric fuel pump that puts out about 30 to 40 PSI, and carburetors run at roughly seven. Without a fuel pressure regulator, you will cause damage to the fuel pump and the carb. So it is very important that you have a fuel pressure regulator with a return line. Mine is a Holley fuel pressure regulator. It takes the 30 to 40 down to seven, and it's a return style, so it sends the rest of the gas back to the fuel tank. You also will need a fuel filter for the carb lines and a fuel pressure gauge to make sure the carburetor is receiving the appropriate amount of gas. Most kits will include the gauge and the filter. In this particular case, the 2021 kit had the filter and the gauge. However, the filter for some reason was left out of the kit, but Summit sent me a replacement. And the gauge was on a banjo style fitting, which I just personally didn't want to use at the moment or at the time, so I didn't hook it up. However, I do have it. Next part, you need to connect your factory fuel lines to the fuel pressure regulator. Now, what I did was a little bit sketchy. I took 3 8 fuel lines and some hose clamps and connected them to the factory hard lines. Now, it is a little sketchy because that's a high pressure fitting and you're using a hose clamp to keep it down. However, it does work. Uh, I don't recommend doing it, but it's if it's all you have at the moment, then you gotta do what you gotta do. The long-term solution is get steel braided hose with the proper fittings and connect them. However, it's a little bit hard to figure out, especially since it was my first time doing something like this. So that is something you need to keep in mind. You will definitely need 
3 8 MPT barbed fittings to connect to your fuel pressure regulator. That way the hose does not have any chance of coming off and is very tight and secured. After this, you have a bunch of minor stuff you need to do once you have your carburetor and intake hooked up. You'll need a bunch of threaded plugs or gauges to put in the threaded holes of your intake. Also, potential vacuum caps in case you're not going to use PCV and other things like that. Now, keep in mind, you will need the gasket. In my particular case, the 21, 2021 kit had all the gaskets I need from the intake to the carburetor and anything in between that I didn't think about. Don't forget, you're also going to need a thermostat for your new intake. You're also going to need a new water neck for your intake for the thermostat housing. I will definitely tell you right now, spend the money and get an adjustable little water neck. That way it's easier for you to hook up a new coolant hose to this because it's going to be in a different position than the TPI. With that, you're also going to need a new coolant hose for that upper hose. So I personally went to O'Reilly's, I went in the back and I took the stock one with me. I took a lot of pictures and I found a hose that is similar to it. I rerouted it differently. I rerouted it behind the alternator versus kind of in the middle of the motor, but that's fine. It's all whatever you can make work. Like I said, the adjustable water neck will make it very easy on you. Next most important thing you'll need is a new distributor. So the C4 Corvette's stock distributor with the TPI is a computer advanced, which is decent. However, for your new setup, it's not going to work well. I put a timing light on mine and it was very off. The car ran terrible. So it will start and it will run, but it's not going to run good. So I highly recommend a va vacuum advanced distributor or some sort of HEI setup. It's all up to you and your budget. Once you got all that hooked up, make sure, of course, you have spark plugs and spark plug wires that'll fit. And after that, now you need to hook up the throttle. In most cases, you can use the stock TPI throttle cable. It's very long, but you can stick it back near the windshield wiper motor to shorten it. You also need to purchase and or modify your throttle cable bracket that bolts to your intake as the stock one will not directly mount up. You can bend it, you can rejail it, you can do whatever you want. It's ultimately up to you to figure out whatever parts you have laying around or whatever you can make work. Also, the transmission kickdown. So I'm going to cheat. I have a manual transmission, so I don't have a kickdown. However, if you're looking for one, they sell brackets at most auto stores. And if they're not a direct fit, you can make it fit. It's just thin metal. You can bend it and do whatever you need. After that, you'll need a throttle return spring and a bracket. I used a Scepter Universal Bracket and a Dorman Assorted Spring Kit, both of which I bought at an auto parts store down the street the same day. So once again, parts are listed in the description with links. Now, if you're doing all of this, I highly recommend you get a set of headers. I purchased a cheap set of headers for 250 bucks and they work and fit great. If you don't get headers and you delete your smog pump, which I did, and which most people will do, you're gonna need to plug the factory holes in your stock manifolds. So however you wanna go about doing that, it's ultimately up to you. If you do get headers, you're also gonna probably need to ditch the stock exhaust system as it's not gonna line up. The stock system is garbage, so I recommend getting rid of it anyway. It's a two and a quarter inch Y pipe system, severely choked on your vehicle. It's probably super old and rusty anyway. Just get rid of it. I recommend purchasing a cap back or you can do what I did and that's purchasing a universal exhaust kit online and cutting it to size. You're going to need to have a friend or a shop weld it, but it will be much better and ultimately cheaper than purchasing a cap back online. You can find the kits in varying sizes for prices of 150 to 300 bucks, depending on the size of material. I recommend two and a half or three inch system depending on your goals and your budget and don't cheap out on the pipes like I did because they're already kind of taking a dump on me you're also with that going to need a couple exhaust hangers so keep that in mind you're going to need to figure out do you want an H pipe or an X pipe or no crossover pipe what kind of mufflers would you like you're most likely going to need reducers for your headers because the cheap headman headers come with a two and a half inch reducer and I had a three inch system so I had to go out and purchase a three inch reducer because it's a ball and socket flange and wouldn't directly bolt up. All right, guys, and that's just about everything you need to convert your TPI or even your TBI or a crossfire injection to carburetor. Now, I'm no master mechanic, and this is my first time doing it. But like I said in the beginning, all the information online is very misleading, and people don't really know what they're talking about. Everyone's an internet expert. So I'm here to tell you, from my experience, this is how I did it and what did not didn't work. 
Now, I want to take a moment to address two things. First thing is going to be people trying to tell you, don't convert your fuel injection to carburetor. And second, I'm going to address the power and torque of a carb versus the TPI or whatever you're coming from. First thing is first, this is your car, your time, and your money. It's also your goals and most likely your source of happiness or entertainment. So with that, if you're doubting your current fuel injection system and you want a carburetor, then convert it. Like I said, it's your car, your time, and your money. It's what you want to do. For me, I didn't like the TPI because it wasn't easy to work on compared to a carburetor, and it wasn't very easy to tune, and it was also very susceptible to any flaws due to all the old computers, wiring, and harnesses. The carburetor for me is much more simple. You can buy them at any parts store, you can tune them how you want, and overall they're just less likely to fail compared to a 40 year old fuel injection system. And now I'm going to address the power output versus the carburetor and the TPI or whatever your fuel injection may be. Again, I want to say neither one is better than the other because at the end of the day, everyone has their set of goals and what they want to do with the car. For some people, they might like low RPM torque of the TPI. For some people, they might not want low RPM torque, therefore they get a different intake manifold, a single plane or a dual plane. Therefore they want to make power at a different part of the RPM, whether it's higher or lower. So it's all on you to figure out what makes you happiest. Because this vehicle is an amazing vehicle to work on with a small block Chevy. And considering we have an L98, we have a good engine to work on. Subscribe if you want to see C4 content on my channel. I got a lot of content planned. I got a bunch of shorts of exhaust clips and I'll happily answer any questions you guys have, so feel free to ask. And with that, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to put in some clips at the end here. Enjoy.